This is the Steve Malsberg Show. J.D. Hayworth sharing hosting duties with my pal Steve Arino tonight. Uh, and let me share something with you that I think is apropos to the topic or one of the topics we're going to discuss in this portion of the program. When I first went to Congress, the district I represented out in Arizona was almost the size of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. One out of every four of my constituents was American Indian. And I'll never forget being on the Navajo reservation one day for a town hall when one of the tribal elders stood up and said, Congressman, BIA is supposed to stand for Bureau of Indian Affairs. But as far as I'm concerned, it stands for bossing Indians around. And that is why we are pleased to welcome in a columnist with the New York Times and New York Post, former Wall Street Journal editor, Naomi Schaefer Riley. She has written a new book entitled The New Trail of Tears, How Washington is Destroying American Indians. Naomi, it's great to have you. And let me call in another Skyper, the television commuter, my tag team partner, Steve Malsberg. And Naomi, we'll get to your book in just a couple of minutes, but I've got to ask you, as a noted observer of all things political, your take on the dissension among the Democrats today in Philadelphia. Boy, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, it couldn't have been worse timing for them, um, better timing for the Republicans. Uh, it, it's hard to imagine how you outdo the kind of chaos of last week's convention. I, I figure last week they had the screens flickering overhead. This year, this week, they might as well be exploding um, because uh, to have this as the way to start the Democratic convention, I, I just I, I can't imagine. Let me ask you something, uh, Naomi. There's uh, Nate Silver, of course, the famed statistician, uh, he of uh, 538, um, said that if the election were held today, and this was before the email uh, revelations, I think, uh, Donald Trump would get 57.5% of the vote. Uh, or I'm sorry, he would have a 57.5% chance of winning. He would win Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Iowa, and New Hampshire, uh, and would get 285 electoral uh, votes. Um, do you agree with that assessment, more or less? And um, what do you see happening uh, when these conventions are over? Where will the race be? Well, I, I am not a pollster. Um, I have read different polls, and I, I still think that it looks to me like the swing states are still pretty close. I mean, I think a lot of people, not Nate Silver, but I think a lot of people look at national polls and they think, oh, look how close they are. But by national polls, of course, Romney was close to Obama. Um, so I think it, it really does depend on those key states. Um, I think Hillary has done herself a huge favor by picking Tim Kaine. I think she will help him with the Hispanic, he will help her with the Hispanic vote. I think he will help her uh, in the Rust Belt where Trump thinks he's going to clean up. Um, and so, uh, and I also think that, uh, you know, Hillary probably is pretty confident, even despite these emails, uh, that her left flank is going to come out to vote for her because they really don't want to see Trump in office. So um, I, 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 I would not dare to contradict Nate Silver, but I'm perhaps a little skeptical. Well, let me just ask you this, because I'm interested in your take on this, Naomi. The fact that Debbie Wasserman Schultz walks the plank as the chairman of the Democrat Party, and then she's hired on as her as Mrs. Clinton's honorary campaign chair. That's not going to yeah, help, I, is it? I could not figure that one out. I mean, I assume that that was the quid pro quo required her required that got her to step aside so quickly. Um, but no, it does not look good for Hillary that she seems to be sort of paying off uh, the DNC chair for her efforts on on Hillary's behalf. All right, uh, Naomi, let's uh, get to a phone call uh, for uh, all three of us. So we have Bruce in Bloomington, Illinois, uh, B Bloomington, Illinois at 877 Newsmax. Hello, Bruce. Hi, how are you? I'm from the Good. People's Republic of Illinois, and I'm trying <laughs> to figure out how to escape. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Steve and uh, J.D., you are two of my big favorites. It's Thank hard you, to sir. find anybody that will support conservatives out here. And uh, I'm a person that left the Republican Party after they gave us McCain, who I know, J.D., you should have defeated, and uh, Romney. And 
fact, and my dad was a uh, classmate of Charlie Halleck, who was the oh, sure. head of the uh, U.S. representative. Yeah, he was, the, he was the Republican I leader. Just wanted to call, yeah. Yeah, I just want to call in, give my support to you. I'm a Trump 2016 supporter. We need to shake up uh, the uh, Republican Party. And obviously, the Democratic Party is going down the tube. Well, Bruce, we appreciate your call and uh, your assessment of what's happening. And, uh, gee, I'm sorry I couldn't have moved you to uh, Arizona from Indiana about six years ago. But we would be remiss, Naomi. After all, you've got this new book. And let me go back to uh, the Grand Canyon State and the fact that, you know, I don't think people realize the Navajo Nation in square mileage is about the size of West Virginia. It transcends the boundaries of four of our sovereign states. And you've written this book about the new Trail of Tears. Tell us the bottom line on what you're seeing that is hurting American Indians. Well, I, as you said, I mean, the size of these reservations is mind boggling, but what they basically are in some cases are third world nations in the middle of the wealthiest country on earth. Um, I, I liked your story. You hear that a lot uh, about the BIA being the bureau of uh, the bossing Indians around people. Um, you cannot find an Indian on a reservation who will defend the BIA. And that organization keeps growing and growing each year. The amount of money that we throw at Indian reservations grows and grows. Um, and then we, of course, busy ourselves with conversations about football team names um, as if that is going to help the most impoverished race in America. Um, in addition to poverty, of course, there's enormous amount of dysfunction on the reservations. There are high rates of sexual assault, of child abuse, of alcoholism, of suicide, pretty much every indicator you can think of. Um, unfortunately, nobody really understands what's going on. It's not simply that we have a history of, uh, you know, forced assimilation and war. Um, what's going on in Washington right now is that we are over-regulating them to death. Um, the land on reservations, few people understand, is held in trust by the federal government, which means Indians really don't have property rights. They can't buy or sell their land. Uh, they can't build homes because they can't get mortgages because banks couldn't foreclose on the land. Um, they have to ask any Bureau of Indian Affairs official in order to get permission to develop natural resources. So, you know, what these people really need are the freedoms that the rest of America. And, and you know, I can there. think of the perfect bumper sticker, free the first Americans. Let them make up yes. their own <laughs> minds. Maybe that will work. Hey, Naomi, but we got a couple of minutes left in the segment. Got to get back to a caller who's been remarkably patient from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. Sarah is on the line. Sarah, got about a minute to give us your question or comment. Okay. Hi, J.D. Hi, Steve. So Hi, I'm going to try to dump as much information as I can as quickly as I can. So in regard to uh, Russians helping Trump, as the media says, not true. I think they're just trying to defeat Hillary because I think they're getting back at her. Um, if you remember, uh, from 2009 to 2013, uh, Russia tried to assume control over Uranium One, and they uh, actually paid Bill Clinton to come do a speech in Moscow. And I think what went wrong was in Ukraine, because I think the oligarchies um, outpaid Russia. Right, right. You know what, Sarah, what you're saying is, uh, and tell me, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the Russians have every reason to want to elect Hillary Clinton, because Hillary Clinton, as you just pointed out, through her shenanigans at the State Department, uh, benefited them uh, in that regard with the uh, uranium, and also the push the reset button, and look where we are now, look what Russia did. So why they would want Donald Trump when Hillary is a proven commodity that will help them and that has uh, laid down for them in the past, um, doesn't make any sense. You know what? I hate to do this, but I got to press the reset button right now because <laughs> our time grows short. Again, the name of Naomi Schaefer Riley's new book is The New Trail of Tears, How Washington is Destroying American Indians. Naomi, we thank you for your time. Steve you, Malsberg, Naomi. great to tag team with you, pal. We'll See do it tomorrow. again tomorrow night. Now, gotcha. gosh, it's a double feature Not here really for me. Right. I'm back with more. Newsmax Prime begins in just about 30 seconds. Thanks for watching. <laughs>